Hello, welcome to the Edupedia world. In this video, we continue learning our loops. So far, we have covered introduction to loop statements, for loop, while loop. In this tutorial, we try to cover do while loop and for each loop. So let's begin. Do while loop. A do while loop is similar to a loop, which is while loop. Except that do while loop is guaranteed to execute at least one time. The difference between do while and while is that do while evaluates its expression at bottom of the loop instead of top. Therefore, the statement within the do block are always executed at least once. So in short, that means do while loop will start the execution from the top block. So in case of while loop, you notice that we are checking the condition first. If the condition is true, then we are executing it. But in do while, firstly, we are executing the code block once. Once it's executed one time, then we are checking for the condition. If the condition is true, then we are executing it for the second time and so but it is always executed once. So this is a syntax of do while loop in which we are writing do keyword and then after curly braces we are writing while inside the while we do have a boolean expression which should be true. Uh, so if it's true the loop will keep on executing once it's false the loop will stop executing and the statements are whatever we have to execute and the statements are those statements that we have to execute within the do while loop. So the reason it's always execute once is because whenever the uh, execution starts it reads do then it reads the statement and start executing it one by one. So by the time all the statement gets executed after that, it reaches to this line and check for the while condition. If the condition is true, it again falls into the loop and execute it for the second time. But if it is false, it will come out of the loop. But in that case also, it has already executed the loop once. So do a loop ensures that your loop actually get executed once no matter the condition is true or false. Okay. So this is a diagrammatic representation which says like there's a do block and then there's a code block that is executed. Once the code block is executed then the condition is checked. If the condition is true the code block is again executed. Otherwise it comes out of the loop. I hope this diagram is quite clear. Okay, so this is a, uh, you can say a demo of do while loop. We have created a do while demo class. Inside that, I have created a main method. Inside the main method, I have taken count i is equal to 1 and then I am doing the do. And the, inside the do, I am printing the count and incrementing the count. And then in the while loop, I'm writing the condition where to stop it. So you can see as in case of while loop, the initialization happens over here. The increment condition is inside those braces. And the condition to stop is inside the while. But the difference is there is a do clause which always executes. So the block that we need to execute is written after do and it executes once. So in this case, you might not understand the difference because uh, you know it will execute 1 to 10 as we did in for and while loop but there are some uh, specific implementation where do while loop is you know very very important um, such as our ATM example so you can instead of printing above when we printed a switch case you can instead of writing there we can also use it by writing it in the do while loop so in that case, it will execute uh, or it will print your statement, the menu for the user, whatever he wants to input in a do while case. So inside a do while, it will firstly print and then it will wait for the user's input. 
If the user input is 1, 2, 3, then it will execute accordingly. If the user input is anything else, it has to come out of that. So it won't execute and the condition will become false. Okay. So we'll uh, see how we can implement ATM using a switch and do while. So now let's try to do that in our IDE. Okay guys, so I have created a class do while example and over here we are going to implement the ATM. So if you remember in our previous example where we were running switch case, we printed the menu. So we are going to do that over here again. So I'm writing press 1 to insert money. Then I will write press 2 to withdraw money and then press 3 to view mini statement. Fine. And after that, we were doing a switch case. Firstly, we need to take user's input to see what is the, you know, uh, number that users enter. So let's do that. Okay, so over here I have taken user's input and I have included scanner class. I have taken my input in the integer variable input. Fine. Now I have to write my switch statement in which I am going to use this input variable for my switch. This, is, this will become my switch variable and over here I am going to write my cases. So the syntax is case, then value, then colon, and then the statement that you want to write or uh, the thing that you want to do. Okay, so I'm writing this is to insert the money and I'm writing the break statement. Then I'm writing case 2. In case 2, we can withdraw the money. So over here, I'm simply writing withdraw the money. And in case 3, we can view the mini statement. So I'm writing over here case 3. This is to view mini statement. Fine. Then I'm writing the default case. Which is simply system.exit. Fine. So uh, we have already created this much program in our switch case example. Now let's modify this to uh, with a do while loop. Okay. So I'm going to write everything inside a do while loop. I'm writing do. And uh, I'm sorry. Let me write over here. Do. And after the switch has ended, I'm going to end it with my while and inside the while I need to write the condition where to end it. Okay. So the condition that I want to end is uh, for example if the user press a case to come out of the menu. So I'm going to give an option to user you know in case he wants to just stop it it can enter So I'm writing press 4 to cancel. So when it's 4 then user has to 
cancel or rather I should uh, write uh, press 4 to exit. Now what I will do is while input is not equals to 4. Fine. And I need to create this variable outside the do loop because it won't recognize it. So that's right. I'm doing it over here. Yeah, now this will work fine. Now let's try run our example. And one more thing instead of, uh, you know, doing system.exit over here because I'm already exiting when users enter 4. So I don't want to exit on any other number. So, you know, over here I can simply print that this is a wrong input. So if users try to enter anything outside 1, 2, 3 and 4, we will print this. This is a wrong input. Now let's run it. So you can see the menu appears. It's saying press 1 to insert money, 2 to withdraw, 3 to view mini statement, 4 to exit. Now let me press 2. So when I press 2, it gives me an output. This is to withdraw money, which is fine. After doing that instantaneously, it's also printing this menu again. The reason it's doing that because now I have kept it in a loop. Okay, this is because you know in a real life example whenever you go to ATM once you have withdrawn a money it going to again ask you if you want to do any of the action again. So that's why we are doing it in a do value. Now again if I want to insert money I can enter 1. Again see it's saying this is to insert the money. So it has printed according to the case but it is also printing my menu again because it is in a loop which is a do while loop. Now let me enter 4 which is to exit. As soon as I enter 4 it is saying this is a wrong input and once it's saying it is a wrong input because in default case I have written this this is a wrong input so for 1, 2 and 3 I have a case and anything outside 1, 2 and 3 I am putting it in a default case which is saying this is a wrong input and you see after that it is not printing any menu and has terminated once it is just to uh, you know correct it because on 4 I don't want to print this as a wrong input right. I am going to comment this default case as of now. And I am going to change the while condition while I want the program to only run when my input is 1, 2 or 3. So that's what I am doing over here. I am going to change it if input is equal to 1, 2 or 3. Then my program should run. If it's not 1, 2 or 3, it should stop. So I'm going to enter 2. And yeah, as expected, it's saying me this is to withdraw money and printing the menu again. Now let me print 5. So it simply exited. Why? Because my loop will only run if the input is 1, 2 or 3. And the purpose of putting do while over here is because initially we want the menu to be printed at least once. We can't expect a user to simply enter something out of 1, 2, 3 and 4. It should uh, know what's the menu. That's why we are writing it in a loop. So that again after doing the operation it again gives an option to the user to do something else. That's why it is in a loop and we are using do while so that it will print the menu at least once for the user. So I hope you got the concept. You can try doing this example yourself because this is an interesting example. Okay, so this was about the do while loop. Now we are also going to cover for each loop in this video. Uh, it will only take about 6-7 more minutes. So let's do that. The for statement also has another form designed for the iteration through collection and arrays. Okay. Now this form is sometimes referred to as enhanced for statement and can be used to make your loops more compact and easy. So yeah, it is another form of for loop and why it is used we will see it over here. So this is a demo for for each. You can see we are having a for each demo and we are having a main method. Inside a main method we have used the array. 
which is having number 1 to 10 and then we are using a for each loop inside for each loop we are using a variable int item and we are initializing that variable with that uh, array numbers and then we are printing count so what happens in this uh, this item int item will pick up number uh, will pick up an item from the array numbers one by one so for the first iteration it will pick the item as one from this array numbers and it will print that over here the count is item which is one in the second loop it will go for two similarly in the third loop it will go for three so you know it will keep on reading the whole array till the array ends and it will gonna pick each item one by one so you need to make sure if you are taking the array of a integer then this the data type of this variable should also be an integer so over here we are writing this example using an array you can also use a char or a string array or you can also use collections so we'll be reading what are collections later on as of now you can try this example using an array fine so this is the purpose of for each loop it's like really beneficial and shorthand in case of collections uh, so there you will actually see what's why we have introduced for each loop and why these are beneficial as of now this is the syntax and this is like the need whenever you want to you know print or take out the things from a array so over here it could be possible that we are taking this array from user as an input if it's not hard coded i'm sorry this is just the output to show you and coming back to that side yeah now uh, suppose if you are taking the input from user you are not aware that how many you know uh, integers user is going to input in that case it is really beneficial because over here you don't know the size you actually don't know what's the condition to end it so you keep on taking the numbers as a whole whatever user has inputted and keep on printing the things so that's why it's like really beneficial in that case fine so um, yeah let's try to also do a small example for for each loop similar to this one okay guys i'm going to create a new class my class name is for each example inside this i'm going to write the main method fine and now let's try to take the input from user so now my input is coming in the string array args okay i just make sure that uh, my uh, user is going to input numbers only so as of now i'm not putting any check to ensure that but while you know running the program i'll make sure i'm entering numbers only i'm not entering string fine so um Firstly, I need to um, write a for each loop. Since this array is of a string type string args, I'm going to take a string variable over here. So I'm taking string str and this is args. This is the array. So it's going to pick up each element from this array args and we'll store it in a string str. And I'm going to print this over here. So this is another way of printing whatever user is inputting. So now since I'm not using an integer array, I don't have a restriction to, you know, actually enter numbers. So it's okay if I'm even entering any characters or a mix of number or integers, it will still run. Well, let's run this program. And let me... Now let's run this program in order to pass an input in eclipse ide you need to right click on and go to run as then go to run configuration and in run configuration you can see you are having like the name of your application over here go to arguments and you can see there we have an option of program arguments so you can over here provide the command line arguments i'm going to print 
two comma three comma five r comma s and any random things okay so this is something i'm printing so these are any i have taken any random input and just go to apply and click on run so you can see this is the output we are getting it is printing everything whatever we have inputted as an argument using for each loop so uh, this is the benefit of for each loop we need not know the size of the array and we can simply use the user input through it fine so thank you guys this was about do while and for each loop um, now in the next video we'll cover about the branching that is the branch statement so we are going to study break continue return statement okay thank you as of now